Today I'm doing something a little fun, a little different. Ever since I got engaged, you guys have been asking for me for a ton of bridal inspired content, which to be honest with you, bores me a lot. And Mario hit me up and was like, actually I think it'd be kind of fun if we did something. And I was like, well, the girls have been asking for bridal, so why don't we give the girls bridal? And then he was like, and I'm bringing hair. And I was like, oh lit, I've been wanting to work with Kaylin anyway, right. so let's get it popping. Today we're gonna be doing bridal and Mary is of course gonna be doing makeup. Kaylin is gonna be doing hair. He snatched up this wig. What are you saying? What are you saying? I mean, like, I just feel like you did such an incredible job and yeah, I'm excited to show y'all what we did. Yes. yes, do it. So I was really excited to do this on Jackie. And basically what we did was um, something, I guess a lot more, a little bit more natural, right? Than one would me. think. Yeah, <laughs> more natural for Jackie, but even for, for, I guess, what I'm known for, which is like a s sort of more sculpted, like super sculpted look. So we went with a more softly sculpted look today and pretty much almost no eyeshadow on her eyes whatsoever. I know. Yeah, and uh, you know, just stay tuned to, to see to see what we did. And Kellen, any thoughts? Yes, I mean, I absolutely love like these cool tones on your skin. So I just came with this blonde situation for you and I think it looks amazing on you. And of course the melt, this melts. Period. And the blonde eyebrows. I oh, know. Yeah. Glad with the blonde eyebrows. I know, very <laughs> different for me. Yeah, it looks so good. So without further ado, let's jump right into the makeup. I honestly thought color correcting was like a mainly a YouTube thing. No, people do it. A lot of people do, do mm -hmm. color correct because if you if you color correct, you don't have to use as much foundation. True. Um, and as much concealer. So what is typical skin prep? I'm sure it varies from person to person, right? It varies from person to person, but me personally, I like to keep it quite simple. Most of my clients will kind of do that stuff on their own. Yeah. They kind of come already sitting down, like fully done, moisturized and everything. Uh huh. But I will sometimes do like a mask. Um, if someone has more dry skin, I'll do like a hydrating mask under the eyes or on the skin. But usually I just do a very emollient moisturizer, whether you are oily skin or dry, because I like to use powders, because I like the makeup to last all day and night. The powders will grip really nicely to the moisturizer if, yeah. it's not, if it's very emollient. The more emollient the moisturizer is, the more natural the powder is gonna look after. That brings me to the next thing I wanna talk about before yeah. you get more into like the technical side of what you're doing. But I think we should tell <laughs> the girls how we first <laughs> officially met, sort of, but not really. Yes. Mario did not know this, but before we talked about doing this collab, he didn't realize I went to his makeup class in like 2011. It was my second class, I think, but it was, yeah, they were both in LA, but yeah. like the one that you went to was like, really like the official first. 2011, <laughs> let's set the scene. Young Jackie, baby freelance girl. This was like very, very early in my professional freelance makeup days. For those of y'all that have been watching YouTube as long as you know I've been on, it was like Mario was blowing up on social media. And this was kind of like the years when like a lot of us were doing your recreations and trying to like mimic your techniques. I remember hearing about his workshop, his first ever workshop on Facebook. And I remember being like, oh my God, I have to go to this class. I was like involved in these like makeup chat rooms on Facebook oh and these God. forums and we were all like, we want to go to this class. Like we were all so excited and he announced he was going to LA. So I was like, oh, he's going to come in LA? Bet, I'm definitely going going. I go on Mario's website. I look at, you know, the whole promo. I'm watching the videos, da, 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 da. And I'm like, I don't care what I have to do. I have to go to this class. Like I had no formal makeup artist training. So this class was like a lot to me, you know, like Wait, I had- How much to, was it at that time? I don't remember, but this, this is the thing. This is why the story is important. I don't remember how much the class was. I remember it being either $300 or 500. Which one do you think sounds more? Uh, at that time? It maybe was two different prices depending on like different like I think the yeah. starter package was like either 300 or 500 I think it was like 500 I'm like looking at the promo excited da, da, da. I seen the price and I was like well hope y'all have a great time <laughs> 
I'll be on YouTube. <laughs> Let me know if there's any BTS. But then I don't know what inspired me. I was just like, let me just like see, like, let me just sign up or whatever. And like, let me just see if maybe they have like layaway or something. This is before Klarna and Afterpay, okay? This is back in the day. This is 2011, this is 10 years ago. I filled out my name, address, all of that information. I don't remember exactly how much the class was, but whatever the price of the class was, was the exact amount of money I had in my account at that time. Oh the exact amount of money I had in my account. Oh my Actually, I had like $10 less. I get to the payment part, clearly my bank is gonna decline this. But let me just put in my card number anyway. So I put in my card number, da 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 da, and I'm literally expecting <laughs> the next page to say transaction decline. I don't know what was wrong with me. I don't even know why I did all this because I literally did not have the money. So I get, what's that? That felt warm. What? Was that your finger? That was my finger. Oh, you're so warm. <laughs> I was like, what's that? So I get to the checkout and I click send and the next page it said, you're confirmed, makeup by Mario. And I died. I was like, <laughs> and you what were did I you do? Were, you were front what row. Did I do? Yes, but I was like, a part of me was like excited, but then I was like, what am I gonna eat for dinner? Like I didn't have literally no money. So of course I overdrafted my account. I was in the little makeup chat room. I was like, guys, I got into the class, oh but I don't have no money. And I remember, oh, I remember the people that was laughing at me. Like, you're so stupid. You spent all your money. They was laughing at oh me. God. Guess who was sitting in front row at Makeup by Mario's class? Me. That's and guess who's nice. now at my studio? <clears throat> 10 years later, <laughs> makeup by Mario. So you know what the moral of the story, guys, is sometimes you have to do things that you don't wanna do. You have to get out of your comfort zone to get to where you wanna be. Even though I overdrafted my account and I really had to go through it that week, I didn't care. I was like, you know what, I don't care. Like, I really don't care. I'll do whatever it takes to level up my artistry. And that was like a big, like, wow. Like, I really got to like invest in myself. Even though when I got there, I was like, going through it and struggling. I don't know, I just was like, I don't, I don't care. Like, I'm here, honey. I did what I had to do. Did you like the class at least? Oh my, what, are you kidding me? We just found the video of the class that I was talking, I'm literally like front and center. You can see me in the video at, at this 2011 class. The makeup on the model is still very much makeup that could be worn today. Like it's, you have like a very timeless technique. Because like when you see my 2011 makeup, you'll know. <laughs> I love timeless makeup. I think if, as long as you don't you don't overdo anything, it'll always be timeless. But there was definitely a phase on YouTube where it was like drama was more and yeah. color and it was relevant for what was popular at the time, you know? I think YouTubers took, I mean, that whole contouring thing that happened. It was out of control. YouTubers like really took it to a whole nother level. Out like of stuff I've never in my life seen before. <laughs> because we don't really do it like that, like that hard in real life. <laughs> But um, it was fun at least. It was fun, but some of it was also clickbait, like. Oh, of course, yeah. that's what I mean. Like they just took it to a whole nother realm. It's literally a realm, stratosphere. But I think this, like this newer generation, I think they're getting it kind of right in that they're just doing it more soft, more natural. I think everyone knows now how to, how to contour. Now they're just kind of doing it more natural, more light. You need to like show off anymore how hard you can contour. Mm -hmm. You are shaping my brow before filling in. That's something I've been doing lately too. Just kind of using a little bit of a cream pigment to kind of just give a natural highlight. And I'm actually not gonna fill in your brows much more than that. Oh. And, but I am going to be brushing them up and out. Okay. So what is the inspo for our bridal look today? Yeah, like what, what yes. look and what vibe are we going for? Well, for me, I'm still kind of figuring it out. Okay. I have a general idea in my mind, but I'm still, I'm, still, I'm kind of getting to know your features right now and uh -huh. I'm playing, um, just kind of putting very light layers of things to see like how it pops, how it looks, and then this helps to sort of guide me. But like right now, mostly what I'm doing is like, I'm you know kind of putting this highlight here, but what I'm really doing is like, I'm kind of analyzing architecturally, like, okay, do I want to push out? Do I want to lift? Do I want to put mm. lower? These types of things. And mm -hmm. then like it gets to a point in a few minutes and I'll kind of like know exactly like, Oh. If that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, but I think I definitely want you, I want you to be snatched, but I want you to, to be like soft at the same time. Snatural, that's what I call it. <laughs> I like snatch, but I like soft. I mm -hmm. like it to feel very much like you. I'm gonna go inside of the upper rim of the eye, tight lining on the, just on the outer half. What color is that? This is the Perfect Brown, it's called. This is from um, this guy, Makeup by Mario's line. That's a good brown. <laughs> yeah, it's nice. It's not like, it's not too red and not too black. Mm -hmm. I love a good brown liner. 
later on, like I'm gonna connect what I just did mm -hmm. and kind of push it out. But right now, I'm, okay. just, I'm just sort of like, like a placeholder. Okay. 23 year old me is dying right now. <laughs> Makeup by Mario is beating this face. And a wedding look at that, y'all. Y'all really got me to do a wedding look. Setting the lid with powder. Yes, yeah, so setting the eyelids. I had put a little bit of um, a deeper cream just mm -hmm. to kind of play with shape. Um, so I'm just gonna actually leave it on there and just set it. I actually don't think I wanna do, I don't wanna do a lot to your eyes. I wanna keep your eyes very open. You have gorgeous eyes and I wanna play them up with lashes and everything, but I don't wanna put too many darks on you. Okay. I wanna make it just all about skin and lips Here and cheeks. Complexion is my favorite makeup step to do. What about you? I love it, yeah. I think if, complexion. I, if I had to choose, I would mm -hmm. say complexion. So if you could never do eyeshadow again versus never doing foundation again, which one would you oh, choose? Never do eyeshadow. I could do eyeshadow with foundation. Damn, okay, well, you better <laughs> stunt on us, okay, damn. You could do anything with foundation. You could do a whole face with different shades of foundation. True. You never went to makeup school, right? No, I worked in retail when I was, I started when I was 17 at Sephora. And oh, no way. That's I where I first, that. First, first learned. And then working in the industry, and mm -hmm. then I started assisting other makeup artists, mostly learning myself on set. Do you do bridal clients? I have had a few bridal clients, yes. I hated doing weddings. Like, they were the worst. So I'm using the Master Mats palette. I'm just kind of mixing these two shades, a little bit of this one here, touch there. I don't want too much precision on the eyeshadow because it's gonna get, it's gonna be, start becoming hard, kind of. It, it's a hard look, right? If you do like a cut crease and you kind of put the perfect light versus, mm -hmm. you know, against the perfect dark, this is more about just kind of a blown out soft. And when someone looks at you, like they don't know like, oh, does she have a cut crease? Or they just think like, oh, beautiful eyes, you know? Nobody's gonna know. So what was your inspo for creating this palette in particular? Oh, the Master Mattes. So these shades are all inspired by human skin tones, actually. Mm -hmm. And actually what I just told you about before, about foundations, you could do anything with foundations. Yep. So I work with cream pigments a lot, and these are all skin colors. These are all kind of uh, skin colors as well. And then you have brighter shades here. And so because I always use this on the eyes, um, I always kind of shape eyes using foundations and concealers. Mm -hmm. I made a, a palette based off of that. So basically you wanted to create a palette that does what a complexion product could do. Yes, and also just something cool to know. I don't know if a lot of people know this, but so light skins can use this obviously to highlight and use as a base and then deeper skin tones are gonna go into more of these shades here. Mm -hmm. But then those shades that deeper skin tones are gonna use as highlight and base, mm -hmm. the lighter skins can use as a crease. Yeah, but sometimes I noticed in a lot of palettes it's hard for deeper skin tones. They don't make a lot of like great highlight or all over of yeah, colors. they don't. And so that was like something important to me because I love those kinds of tones. Me too. So how do you feel about this whole soft glam trend that everybody's been doing for like the past couple years? The new softer approach? This is probably like another YouTube thing, but I feel like it's very like, very much like 90s makeup. So it's like all matte, still full glam. Oh, oh. But it's like all flesh tones. I love it. I Me know. too. I think it's flattering. Mm -hmm. Anything with earthy tones, I'm obsessed with because yeah. I like natural colors. Yeah, when that started coming back, I was like, oh yeah, turn that up. I love that. And <laughs> yeah. I literally have been into that trend like since it kind of became popular. It's very flattering. It's like it's universally so flattering. flattering. Yeah. I don't even really like wear color on my eyes anymore the way that I used to. It's like brown lips, dark brown liner. It's literally like 90s makeup. No more shine, cream highlight if you do highlight at all. Yeah. I'm just, I'm also loving this newer sort of, you know, like the whole TikTok makeup that's like so fresh and, mm -hmm. you know, just a lot, Me too. a lot less product. I agree. I like how we're getting more skin out. Ooh, my eyes do look good. <laughs> you have hardly anything on. I know, but I see it. It's like taupe. Yeah, just a little. Taupey. A little shadow. When are you joining TikTok, Mario? Um, after this video. <laughs> <laughs> Comment y'all if he should join TikTok, he should. I have one, I just haven't posted a video yet. <gasps> you know what you'd be really good at? Mm. I feel like people love makeup artist reacts. Yeah. So what you would do is maybe you can like react to like one of your old looks that you, like your old red carpet styles or something oh, like that. I can't stand looking at my old stuff. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. No, let's not do that. But that's what makes it fun. Like you can make it more lighthearted and be like, this is what I would do differently now. You don't have to drag yourself, but you know, you could make it like cute and fun. People love nostalgia on TikTok. They love like back in the day or they love to see like professionals' opinions on things. Yeah. So I think you'd be good at that. I see those on- uh... On YouTube too. People love makeup artist reacts, hairstylist reacts, esthetician reacts. They love that kind of stuff. No, no one is too old for TikTok. I thought I was too old for TikTok and now I'm almost a million. I've been growing. There's something for everyone on TikTok. Wow. 
You work with so many different complexion shades. I want to show y'all what his palette looks like. <laughs> Don't spill it. Okay, so this is what his face palette, it's like so many different shades. I just mix on the spot. Mm -hmm. I'm not the type of person that will use one foundation one. color ever. Every face probably has at least four different foundations on it, five concealers, especially when, especially deeper skin tones. Yeah. Because you can't put one color all over a deeper skin tone. You gotta go a little deeper on the forehead, a little less product. You know, same thing like when you get to this area. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's how you get the most natural. So is it safe to assume this is a highlight color you just applied? No, right now I'm just sort of like applying a couple of sheer layers mm. and I'm mixing in different colors. Okay. Process. Mm. And so right now I'm putting a little bit of um, red undertone mixed with a little bit of yellow undertone. Do you see me more neutral? Is that why you're mixing red and yellow? I don't like too red and I don't like too yellow mm. uh, on anyone to be mm -hmm. honest with you. The type of makeup that I do also, um, I kind of hit every kind of exposed part of the body. So like oh. I, I hit the neck usually like for red carpets and things like that. Weddings, red carpets, the neck, I hit the arms, I hit the hands. Yeah. Um, yeah, the hands, uh, especially the hands. Oh, he's clocking y'all. <laughs> <laughs> he said it's <laughs> full coverage. Full coverage. That's amazing. This is actually a mixture of liquid foundation, cream foundation, and a couple of concealers and a couple mm -hmm. of like um, pigments, a couple of like red, yellow pigments. Oh, okay. Red, yellow, and black. Uh, that's pretty much what they make foundation with. Yeah. Those pigments. When I was in hair school, we had to do that exercise where you take primary colors and make a foundation. Mm. Is it hard? Pretty hard, but I think if you know the basics, you can figure it out. Yeah. I didn't even know you went to hair school. I did, Sassoon graduate. Oh, you did mm -hmm. Sassoon? I did Ooh, Sassoon. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. Honey, they put me through it. The only black girl. <laughs> and then another black girl came like the next class after. I was like, save me, girl, please. But it was great. I mean, I learned a lot. I did with Veda. Oh, you did? This is the um, my favorite. It's actually launching this in the last collection, Soft Sculpt. Completely random because there's no product for it to go with, but <clears throat> I just had to, when I, when I completed the brush, I had to launch it because it's inspired by this other brush I used for years for complexion, but I just kind of changed the shape mm -hmm. and made it less dense so that it really kind of hugs these little areas here. It, yeah, it is actually more spread out than like the typical like contouring brush or... Yeah, but for complexion, like skin, mm -hmm. this I love, especially for this. Like you just do this to any time you do your foundation, you finish it like this and it just does something to it that makes it, kind of breaks up that like too perfect feeling and mm. makes it feel like instantly natural. It's just um, a damp beauty blender. Mm -hmm. and no just, product? No product. I'm just sort of like blending even more, mm -hmm. um, almost like removing a little bit of what I put oh, on. Oh, okay. For me, I kind of do the whole makeup in like this, little tiny layers, mm -hmm. um, because the end result then, it just kind of feels a lot more natural. So Mario, do you have like an embarrassing like client story? Embarrassing? Yeah. Like where you like did something like, or maybe you made like a big mistake or something. Oh my God, yes. What? Um, well, I don't know if this one, if it translates like when you're telling the story, but I was on set mm -hmm. with Kim doing a cover with Steven Klein. Steven Klein is like a massive like photographer, mm -hmm. like iconic photographer. She was in this little set thing and it had glass doors, but it didn't have like the frame things. Uh-huh. And she was inside. Oh my God, what happened? She was inside of it and I went like, it was so quiet. It was this massive studio and no. it was like completely so quiet. Were you there? No. <laughs> oh, was, I feel like you started laughing. This is like three years ago. Um, there was like, Garen was like, the, this huge hair slice was there and like, it was pitch quiet, like just quiet. Oh my God. And so I was like, oh, hold on. I was like, I'm going to go touch her up. So I start running. <gasps> to go like do it really quickly so I'm not wasting time. He's and a runner, the, he's a track star. And I go slap completely into the glass. No, you didn't. Wait, yes. you didn't see the glass? No, I didn't see it because it was dark in the studio. Oh no. I can't even tell you like, how <laughs> mortifying, how mortifying, like Kim and I just started laughing. Like we couldn't, <laughs> I was so embarrassed though. No, oh my God. I usually don't do stuff like that. You know, I'm very observant and yeah. so like I try to avoid mistakes, but that that was pretty mortifying. <laughs> it's hard to recover from. Yeah. You weren't bruised, were you? No. Have you ever had any like makeup faux pas or anything? Like accidentally grabbed lash glue and put it on the cheeks or something? I don't know, something silly. Oh. Yeah, that stuff happens. And when I was a young artist on New York Fashion Week, uh -huh. you know how the models are like rushing in and there's no time and blah, blah, blah. So there was this pretty big model, I forgot her name, Carolyn something. And at that time, this was probably the er very early 2000s. Mm -hmm. They gave me the job of doing her makeup 
because she she had like five minutes, like literally her hair and makeup, full hair and makeup. She was oh coming for another show, and so I was putting moisturizer on her with a Q-tip. Okay, so just imagine this moisturizer. Yeah, I was like putting some moisturizer on her, like oh, just to place it. To place it. Uh huh. And I accidentally, like, she moved, and I accidentally went completely inside of her nose. Can I just tell Whoa, you? Whoa, you did the first COVID test. Can I? Yes. <laughs> you did the first. <laughs> You're a genius, Mario. We owe everything to you. Innovation, innovation. <laughs> let me tell you. Oh my God. Yeah, that was another thing I never forget, and I think ever since then, I'm because I'm always like, I don't like working on fashion shows. That's not my thing. It's I think too I'm, fast. I was traumatized because of that experience. I think. Oh my God! Yeah, was, was she like okay? Not really. <gasps> oh my God! Not really. I mean, oh she was no. pissed because oh. I went deep, like with the. Oh. <laughs> yeah. But you know, a couple of things like that. Did you get in trouble? Like, did anyone say anything to you? No, I don't think I got in trouble, but it was bad because she, you know, she was quite. Um, she was like one of the bigger girls, you know what oh, I mean? So like, no. the makeup artist that I was assisting was the little- Oh, know, and you were the assistant? I was, yeah, I was a, I was on part of the team. Oh, that's even I was worse. young, I was like probably 21. Oh no. I just felt horrible because I'm like, damn, like he gave me the big girl and, yeah. I, and I effed it up. But you know what? That's a good lesson. The mistakes that we make are not always going to follow us at every point of our career and you can recover from anything. And let me tell you, when you do something like that once, you don't do it again. Yeah, you truly yeah. Do learn. You learn the hard way, and then you also learn you're not a fashion week kind of it's artist. Not, it's not for me. Yeah, you know, I like my I like one on one. I don't like all the chaos. Mm -hmm. that, you know? Some people really live for that fast paced, quick environment. They think well, creatively on their feet with less time. I'm not one of those people. I'm like, give me three hours, girl. I'll see you when <laughs> my lash glue is still drying. <laughs> That's that takes ten minutes alone. I like more architectural makeup where you're kind of. Making someone Sculpting. look super beautiful yes. and, and not so much of the, I guess, creative stuff. Because some of that stuff is really fun, but some of it does not look cute, you know? I like wearable makeup. Pretty and glam. But y'all already knew that. I am mixing now a liquid foundation with a cream foundation. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm kind of mixing a yellow and a red together just to get something more neutral. Going a little layer on top, thin layer of this mixture of cream and liquid. And then I'm going to go over with a little bit of the more red just around the mouth area. Do you prefer liquid foundation or cream foundation? For many, many years I only used cream, but now I use both. Sometimes creams can be heavy in consistency, uh -huh. which is fine because you can shear them out, but when you mix it with a liquid foundation, the consistency just becomes very yummy. You know, like mm. it's like not too dry, but it's not mm -hmm. too watery. Mm -hmm. It has a nice bounce to it. But you know what, makeup wasn't really my first love. My first love was really fashion and fragrance was really what got me into beauty. Beauty first, definitely fragrance. And then makeup, I was kind of like, I see you, but I'm not ready yet. But I was definitely the fashion girl. Hmm. Like I just knew I was gonna go to fit them when I was like 13, 14. Is that where you went? No, because my parents, they gave me an ultimatum. They was like, we're not paying for no damn fashion school. I was like, okay, I guess I'll be a pharmacist then. So then I was trying to do the whole university thing and that didn't last. I dropped out two years later. Oh my God, you, would you know we literally have the same freaking story? How many things you said today that is the exact same thing? I did the same thing. I went to two years and then dropped out before mm -mm. I could, like, the same exact thing. After two years, I was like, no. Okay. That makes three of us. Mm -mm. Wait, same? Yeah. Oh my God. Just rub that in with your lips. What's that? Oh, is it a scrub? It's yummy, yeah. You could, you could eat it, actually. I think I will. It's lunchtime anyway, shoot. This is... What? <laughs> Give us the tea. I'm getting too excited now. So this is the Soft Sculpt uh, Shaping Sticks. Oh. Basically, it's my contour stick. It's my new sculpting stick. Whoa, this brush. Hold on. <laughs> it has grooves. It has these little five nubs. Uh -huh. um, what those do is, I'll, I'll kind of tell you as I'm putting it on, I'll explain to them just so they understand. It's super cool. It comes in six shades. This right here pops off so that you can easily wash this and clean it. You know how sometimes like when you have a brush on a stick that they're so pointy and so dense that when you kind of rub it, it's like useless because mm -hmm. it doesn't really blend the product nicely. So what these nubs do is that they don't allow the corners of all the, the sort of corners around the perimeter to create any lines. So the way that you oh. use this is not by rubbing, you use it by tapping, tapping the product in and then it kind of just really melted into the skin. That's how I prefer to apply contouring anyway. Yeah. Is tapping. These are pretty dark. Yes, yeah, so these two are, this is the dark and the um, dark and dark deep. Mm -hmm. And then eventually we are gonna also wow. expand into other um, other ranges. That's as good. Well. The soft sculpt collection, and then these uh -huh. are the soft sculpt shaping sticks. Soft sculpt sounds like a plastic surgery really? technique or something. <laughs> it 
<laughs> sounds really? like it sounds like soft cool sculpt, sculpt or paint. something soft sculpt. Oh, I see. I can yeah. See. Okay. It's inspired by my techniques, obviously, right? Mm -hmm. But you know how I was showing you earlier, like I do this. Mm -hmm. How do I take this and make it into something into extremely easy for for the person at home to be able to do it at home quickly, easily, without the shearing out and all that stuff, right? Because I spend a lot of my time shearing product out. What we did is we came up with this thick formula. It's very kind of natural. It goes on sheer, and then it's very easy to blend into the skin. May I? Yeah, of course. But the best thing about it is that... Oh, it's like balmy kind of. It is sheer. But the best thing about it is that when you go outside, this looks beautiful like your own skin. Like, you mm -hmm. know, sometimes contours and bronzers... They Way can, too harsh. They can look harsh out yeah. there in the daylight. The whole inspiration behind this entire collection was that this is made for every day and for daylight. It's like the real version of what we've known with the whole contour trend of the past several years. Yeah. This is like the softer... Wearable version. Not the sort of Instagram... Photograph. Yeah. 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 Okay, I'm here for it. Nice. That's the kind of makeup I like. How I do this now is I use the smile as a guide. And so I'm going to go ahead and now just apply more to the upper portion. Now, the way you were normally taught, right, is to suck in the cheeks. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Right. So the way that you were normally taught was to do it down here. The new way that I'm declaring is a new way. The soft sculpt way is to do it slightly higher. Okay. Um, so that you're not sort of dragging the face down and elongating it, but rather you're lifting the face lifting. a little bit. Also not going too close to the lap lines, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's sort of a new technique that I do. Mm -hmm. And you flip over and you just kind of smile for me a little bit. Yeah. You just kind of pat, pat, pat. And, Stunning. And then you add more if needed. Mario say y'all heifers need to get more sleep. <laughs> Put the contour down, stop drinking coffee, and get more sleep. I can feel the little grooves too. The little nubs. nubs. Yeah, nubs. the little nubs. You said nugs. Nubs, <laughs> nugs. This is good because I feel like you're releasing a lot of stuff that's currently popular. Yeah. Because I do notice that a lot of people, myself included, I tend to contour a little bit higher too, a little bit more lifted. That's pretty much it. That blended out so fast. Wow, that must be the formula. Yeah, just very like sheer, um, emollient, yeah. easy to blend. But after about two minutes, then it does become like a soft mat. So it kind of, it, it kind of blends, it mm, sets into your skin sets. nicely. It doesn't remain oily. Okay. <clears throat> I like to sometimes like for everyday stuff, take the leftovers on the brush and just kind of dab like this. That's what I do too. But for the sake of the video, we'll go with it. Oh my God, that blends out so fast. That right there is about to be my new favorite product. It was just a coincidence like how it kind of launched at the same time that this whole natural contour thing happened because mm -hmm. I was like freaking out. I didn't want to launch a contour product at all. Why? Well, because... You, did you feel like the trend was already like dead? No, I just had a very tumultuous relationship with contour because when I started, oh. when they started calling me the contour king years ago, I didn't want to be known as that because I was oh. afraid that people would only call me that. I shied away from it until I started getting brand deals pretty much and I was like, whoa, this is kind of crazy. <laughs> Period. Um, <laughs> he said, actually. <laughs> <laughs> no, but on a serious note, I definitely didn't want to launch my brand with that because yeah. I thought it would be expected. But we asked around like people in, you know, in Sephora, like all of the beauty advisors, we asked my followers around, people in the industry and everyone wanted to come complexion for me it kind of naturally evolved into this i could definitely see that what have been your favorite beauty trends over the past 21 years yes. or maybe like what are the most current standout ones for you right now i'm loving the blush trend the cream blush trend freckles um blush on the nose blush on the forehead type of thing i think there's something so fresh and cute about it yeah and what else i'm loving right now do you like faux freckles i do i do them sometimes i'm gonna do some on you Okay. Would you do faux freckles? I would. You would? Okay. I've only done that once Maybe like we'll years ago in a video. Oh, I guess we're getting bridal faux freckles today. I don't know. Maybe a couple. This freaking hair. You are just insane, Kaylon. I'm, I'm shook right now. Having fun back here. Mm-hmm. I've never seen someone ask to smile while contouring. Another reason why is I do that because why? when one smiles, that's where like the little fine lines and everything start to become more prevalent, right? Mm -hmm. And so I always use that smile as a guide um, and I kind of work around the lines, for example. So if I don't oh. want those lines to show more, there are certain textures I don't want to put on them. Got it. And then also um, for the same reason as like with the laugh lines that I was mentioning earlier, sometimes I don't want to bring attention to the laugh lines. And mm -hmm. so when you smile, it kind of guides you away from them. You can kind of see really nicely like where not or where to apply, where not to apply. I noticed you haven't hit the faux head yet. You know, I don't actually... Um, I don't put a lot of contour on the forehead. Really? I like to use bronzer. A bit of bronzer. Okay. Yeah. Um, I like the majority of the product here, mm -hmm. and I do a little bit over here, but on the forehead, I don't like to do too much. I usually hit the forehead with the bronzer afterwards. Powder bronzer? Yes. 
Yeah, you can see how sheer this is for sure. The way that you did the complexion, it looked like you weren't really putting anything on and then all of a sudden it's a full face. <laughs> it's so weird. Didn't it kind of look like that? Y'all comment below, like, didn't it look like he wasn't really? No, it looked like he wasn't putting nothing on. All of a sudden, boom, full coverage. When? You mean the foundation first? Just like the how you build it up. Yeah. I build up too, but not as much as, you, you start really sheer, like yes. really sheer. Well, part of it is also because of what I mentioned before, is the first time doing your face. Uh huh. So a lot of that whole beginning process of me sort of putting these sheer layers, I'm real, what I'm really doing is mapping, mapping and, and got and mapping, it. Mapping and clocking and calculating and to see what it is I'm going to do. It's me getting accustomed with your face. Got it. Do you guys like this color? You know I live for ashy blonde. Whoa, it's big too. Oh, I love it. So tell us what this is. It's a mixture of a few different things. It's a little bit of that concealer I showed you, the mm -hmm. Carlon, uh -huh. mixed with some liquid concealers, uh -huh. mixed with some just pigment. Oh, okay. Um, and I'm shearing it out now and just sort of applying it as a highlight slash concealer. It's um pretty neutral. Yes, actually, yeah, one of the colors I, I use is like a neutral. Mm. Um, I use a little bit of yellow, mm -hmm. a little bit of like a pinky and then neutral. Gold, and then one, a little bit of a golden pigment. It looks so pretty already. I feel like there's been a long-standing kind of beef. Not really beef, but it's like an unspoken thing. Like professional makeup artists versus like influencers. Oh, really? We're never really like taken seriously because we're, you know, influencers. Yeah. Do you have any thoughts on that? Yes, I do. Oh. Maybe a little too many. Oh. So listen, for me, I mean, I've spoken about this maybe a couple of times in the past, but never like on a video like this. Mm -hmm. But I never understood why that was the case, right? Because I just feel like, why would you not be happy for someone if they're if they're if they're getting success and they're becoming popular and they're like, Period. for me, like that's that's so beautiful to see. So like, why should there be beef? Or like, one one person does one thing, it's very different from what the other person does. But just support each other, love each other, be happy for each other. You know? I agree. I definitely agree with the sentiments that like I've been both, and we definitely don't do the same thing. Like the freelance lifestyle and the lifestyle of an, it's not even close to the same thing. Like, I'm not taking red carpet clients. <laughs> like it's just not gonna happen. I was like in a unique situation in that I was like kind of both in a way, mm -hmm. you know? Like, you've, yeah, over over the t over the years yes. you've kind of become- In the Instagram generation. Like, I agree. You know, I kind of became like half and half, I guess both. And so that was really cool for me too. Yeah. I mean, I loved both parts of it. So Mario just said, y'all ain't booked enough. Stop being haters. Get back to work. Go sanitize your kit. No, I said that. He didn't say that. <laughs> it's I a lot of brushes. I, I wish I could see how many brushes are. I think it's like 75 brushes. Ooh, that's pretty what you just put on. You're using the monitor as a mirror, huh? Um, yes. Yeah. Do you, do you do that? Yeah, I have to. I be telling people and they do not believe me when I say this. I'll be like, this shadow is green, but you're seeing purple on camera. And they'll literally be arguing with me in the comments. It's purple. What are you talking about? I'm like, oh, I'm- does it change color? Well, cause if you're, some things have like multi, you know, like different pigments and different um, tones and it'll literally translate differently on camera sometimes. Or like I'll say this foundation um, is quite red and someone might say that's not red at all. And I'm like, well, you're looking at it on your phone or your computer. It's probably not gonna look the same as what I'm seeing in person, but the camera be playing tricks y'all. Mm, what type of blush do you like? I love cream blush. I love stick. I like stick when I'm not wearing makeup. What I like cream. Color? Oh, um, I like peach, pink, like that kind of, like a blue tone pink, like a blue base pink. Actually, that's not, that's kind of coral almost. I would wear something like this every day. These two. I would wear these two every day. For a wedding look, I would do, I would do this. These are stunning. Guys, Mario's giving us cream blushes. You know I'm dying. Y'all know how much I love cream blush. This one. Is, it, is that this one Yeah, here? that's earthy pink. Let me see this. It has a muteness to it. No, I like this one. Earthy pink. Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't wear that plum. You wouldn't? No. This, this looks so creamy. I would put, I would probably end up putting something on top of on it. On top of it. Yeah. Smile. Do you ever do blush underneath the foundation? Underneath? Mm -hmm. No. Really? Cream blush? Really? You do yeah, it under? Yeah, I do that Why? all the time. That's been my thing lately is underpainting, doing everything backwards. So I'll actually do concealer first and then I'll do contour and shaping, and then I'll do blush, and then I'll blend all that out, and then I'll put foundation on top of that. In, bet in between it and on top of it. 
I can see how that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's so pretty and fresh. This one is like quite dewy. It's like more emollient. Mm -hmm. um, once you blend it in, it kind of becomes like part of the skin. Really nice. Uh huh. Everything so far has been really balmy and dewy, which I like because then there's a little bit more versatility. Like I can wear this with little, very little makeup or no makeup at all versus a product that's just full coverage, full opacity. Like those are a little bit harder to work with. Your whole arm is your palette now. He literally started blending blush up here. I'm like, not the elbow. I'm like, if you see me on set, it's like up to my shoulder. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. It's oh a, my it's God. Just, it's just a habit. Wow, this looks so pretty so far. Because nothing, there's nothing like the, you know. The just, skin. The skin melts it nicely. Yeah. I also noticed you do lots of tapping. Tapping, not rubbing. Yeah, yeah. no swiping. Do you like applying blush towards the center or a little higher? Does I it do depend? It, I do it here, depending on the face, but I, mm -hmm. do it, I do it in this area and then I kind of push it upwards. Mm -hmm. Kaylon, do you do any makeup? Have um, you? No, I don't. I feel like if someone put me to the test, you could probably. I see it every day. So yeah. I'm like, yep, I know the step, but I've never actually sat there and did a face. When I went to hair school, I mean, I already wasn't trying to really do hair, but after I like got my license and did everything, I was like, yeah, I'm definitely not a hair girl, but I'll do it if I have to. It's just not the same thing. Like I used to hate when I would get like job opportunities and they'd be like hair and makeup. And I'm like, why? It's not the same. Those are the worst. Sometimes I needed the money so That's bad. what I'm saying. You would just be like, just, just, so, just pack the kit. I used to do these, um, they're called satellite media tours. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking, you know, this is like 18 years ago. Wow. Um, but it was a good rate oh, at that so time. Beautiful. I would have to, um, I'd have to go at three in the morning and be there and do hair and makeup for like these business people that would go on the live news channels oh. at live at 5 a.m. or whatever. But the rate at that time was like, I think it was like 475 for like a, that two hour period. Oh. And that was a lot to me. Like, that's a lot of money. Yeah. And that's so good, even for today. Sure. That's how I paid for my, my whole college. Like, yeah. Wow. And, but I didn't know how to do hair. and But I would take the job anyway. <laughs> they didn't know that. So they didn't know that. So I, all I knew how to do is use a curling iron. Uh -huh. But what I would do is I would do their makeup so snatched <laughs> That the women would not care. They would be like, it's fine, just put in a ponytail. Like they would just be feeling themselves. <laughs> and that's how I got through by doing hair and makeup. <laughs> that's cute though. But if they're doing like media tours and stuff, like it's not like you don't do a whole pin up inspired hairstyle. Like the hair's probably gonna be simple anyway, right? It depends on who it is. But like yeah, I literally, that's true. I, I would spend so much time in the makeup to that there wasn't even time to do hair, even if we wanted it. Oh, wanted so to. you would just throw it up and do a little something, something. I mean, I had that one curling iron, it was like a con air. <laughs> And I would just curl with their hair, like, and that's all I could do. I know that. that is, I know that curling iron was sick of you, honey. I hated doing hair. That's hilarious. I like doing color though. That was kind of cool. I think it was like the whole color theory thing. Like, it kind of reminded me of makeup, so maybe that's what it was. But it's so time consuming. Too much this, you might mess it up. You put not enough of this, you might mess it up. You leave it on too long, you're gonna be bald headed. I've actually lost patience to color <laughs> no over way. the years. I'm oh like, my oh God. my goodness. I'd rather just have fun and do the things I like to do and just mm -hmm. create. I mean, sometimes I don't mind coloring. Yeah. Um, a lot of times I don't have an option. Yeah. <laughs> but I for sure would rather have a colorist by my side. Because they're just good at that. And like, I, I like going to places where people specialize in things. So like, if you specialize in cutting, just only cut hair. Like, leave the bleach alone. Like, just focus on that. And if you color, I'm not coming to you for haircut, period. Like, it's one or the other for me. Um, I have it, do you need it? Uh, no, I have it here. I'm just wondering if it's good on you, the honey. Have you mm -hmm. used it yeah, I like it. I actually like to use it last, because it's kind of light. It's too light, right? And yeah. How about the medium deep, do you use it? That's my favorite powder. For under eyes? When I die, put Laura Mercier medium deep in my coffin, period. Y'all cannot touch none of my makeup. under eyes too? Sometimes, like if I get too carried away and too light, I may use that to tone it down. Tone it down. Because sometimes it'll literally kind of take away the highlight a little bit. A little bit of honey and a little bit of banana powder. I what were you doing? Both. Oh, you mixed it for my under eye? Yes. So Mario just mixed Laura Mercier honey, the new um, honey powder with medium deep and banana powder. And a little bit of banana powder. Wow. I didn't know people still were using banana powder. It's like such a, you're very loyal. <laughs> you're so well, loyal. There was a many, many years that I stopped using it. But, uh -huh. uh, for, I love I love it for, for um, darker skin. For deep mm. skin, it's, um, you know, sometimes you just need that little bit of yellow. Just a little bit. 
But what I never intended to happen, uh, or to happen, was that w you know women were putting it. I mean, I'm talking about like white women, every. Just everyone was putting it all over their face, and it's like, guys, I never used this under the eyes on everyone. Like, I, it was a powder that I would use on the on the skin, like on the face and the neck and stuff. But like, people were putting it heavily under the eyes. Yeah. And I eventually wound up many years later uh, telling people that, oh, by the way, you guys know I never actually use that under the eyes. <laughs> After all the <laughs> failed prom pictures you put us through, Mario, <laughs> you could have put us on earlier. That's so funny. Well, if I wasn't on YouTube, so I didn't know. Yeah. Back in the day when we were recreating all of the super bright under eye looks and the makeup on Mario techniques, we were snatching and putting them on YouTube. He didn't know. Like he was... You were so booked and busy, right? That you were just like not really, and you weren't really like on YouTube like that? I wasn't on, like I wasn't a YouTube viewer. I'm not a very digital digital savvy person. Mm -hmm. I just started watching YouTube a couple years ago. But no, at that time, like I knew a little bit of what was going on, mm -hmm. right? But I just, I didn't know the extent at mm. all because there were videos being uploaded daily. It was later in life, I want to say around 2000. 16, 17, 18, that I started to see like everyone's videos, like Jaclyn Hill and you wow. and all these people, everyone from back in the day. Like, that's crazy. That's when I started noticing all the videos. And I was like, years what? and years later. Like, yeah, I just had no idea while it was happening. I'm shook. Oh, this is just a little bit of a um, loose powder. Mm -hmm. Just to set. That's my skin tone color, right? Yeah, this one is the um, medium deep. Yes. I love that powder. I look very soft. This is very bridal. Ooh. Okay. Brushing through a little bit of the Anastasia. This one's called Caramel Tinted Brow Gel. Oh, so you use a lighter one. I'm just testing the, um, the color. Mm -hmm. I even just a little bit. So we might be going lighter with my brows today. I feel you brushing the opposite way. Why do you do that to color or to fully saturate? It just coats it mm. with um, the product. Mm -hmm. What's the fastest you can do this makeup routine? If I'm not talking. Yeah. And if I'm just focused in front of like the face. Like life or death, like we need her on set. Can you do it in 30 minutes? I could do it in 20, probably. Oh, damn. Yeah, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm fully focused. Yeah. yeah. Now, what's the ideal time frame you want? On a perfect day, if you had all the time in the world, what would you like to dedicate? Um, for my clients, like mm -hmm. a glam makeup, mm -hmm. like this, um, two hours. Give me two hours. There's hair going on silently, nails, this, that. So yeah. you never actually get the full time. Yeah, that's true. Most of my clients, depending on how glam they are, but like, how much makeup they like. Mm -hmm. I mean, like when I'm doing Kim, for example, Kim allows like two to three hours. Mm -hmm. Because there's so much stuff going on. That yeah. Like the hair is, in, is intense, the makeup, it's like a long you know? That's really pretty. It looks really good with the color of the wig. Like I actually love that you lightened it. Quite soft, right? Mm -hmm. It's a different look. I'm gonna go in with the darker after and just kind of fill little areas. Fill in shape. Right now I'm just kind of doing an overall. Oh, we really going blondes? Mm -hmm. I've never gone that light with my brows. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Or, yeah. I'm just gonna. I'm kind of adding a little bit of highlights right now. I mean, I would. Don't get me wrong, but I've just never done it. Do you ever like actually bleach people's brows? Um, I have in the past, more for like fashion shoots and stuff like mm, that. Yeah. Okay. I find it very interesting when other people do my makeup because I have my own look aesthetic and my own habits. Yeah. So then I get to see how I look or how I'm viewed from someone else's eyes for once. Yes. And it's quite interesting. Everybody has like their own kind of signature way that mm -hmm. they do things and they, that they see it. But of course, someone else is gonna always see it a little different. Yeah, I like it though. It's like, ooh, never tried that before. Maybe I'll adopt that. If you don't have everyone on YouTube not bleaching their eyebrows. No, hell, nah, <laughs> look, let me tell you something. Do you know how many things people have asked me? I'm just like, some things do not belong on YouTube and I'm very adamant about that. <laughs> Guys, I'm, d I'm doing you a favor by telling you some things you cannot DIY. Like, right. you just can't, like. Seek professional help. Please seek professional help. <laughs> I can't seek professional help. Taking a bit of this shade right here, um, this is the shade number 10. Mixing it with this one here and this one here. I just want basically right now a little bit of a caramelly, mm. uh, a little bit of a red. For my brows? Yeah. Nice. And then I'll probably do later another color too. Okay. So he just used his eyeshadow palette for my brows, but it makes sense because it's all skin tone shades and neutrals. I love fluffy brows too. My little brother, um, just started wearing makeup like in the past year it's really cute he's always texting me like do you like that powder from la mercier your brother yeah my little brother How old is he? he's 19 
Oh, now he's like experimenting with complexion products. And so whenever he comes here, he's like, um, so what's good with that skincare? I'm like, okay. <laughs> Take what you need. Mm hmm. Well, that's a good sister. My sister's actually making products. Oh, really? Yeah. No way. Oh, that's dope. No, I actually kind of like it like that. His face looks too good to cover. Right. You're like, give me my whole face, mm. please. Give me a whole 180 view, honey. This is the um, powder bronzer, soft sculpt bronzer. Soft sculpt bronzer. Uh, same collection. So I'm just kind of mixing um, these two shades here. Mm -hmm. One is more golden, one is more red. So that kind of just, oh, sorry, did I poke you? No, you're good. <laughs> that kind of just sets it, sets the- Oh, um, wow, that's stunning. That I immediately it. noticed the difference. So I like to press it like this, and then this kind of will add that sun kiss kind of a feeling, but this is also going to set what, it, what we added before. That was interesting how you were holding the brush. This? Yeah. So, so, yeah, because you- I kind of changed the shape of it so that I can go. No, you were like fisting it almost. Like this? Yeah. I was. You weren't? Or maybe it looked oh, like I was you doing were. This. Oh, like this, yeah. You know, because of the position you're in. So I'm oh. Like, I'm trying to curve my hand. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> fisting it. Damn. <laughs> Damn that reminds me of um, one time I was using. <laughs> I was using Manny Emue's palette when he first launched Lunar Beauty. The drag palette. Yeah, and there were like drag terms, like I didn't know. <laughs> what does this mean? And like I was just like, oh, I'm gonna use the shape that is the. Starting off with a light amount of Kai Kai. People were like, girl, <laughs> ooh, this bronzer See, is making a lot of points right now. I only put um, the bronzer up here. Mm -hmm. I don't really put all the cream because it's not necessary. You just kind of tie in the look for cohesion mm -hmm. uh, with a little bit of this bronzer, the same one that you put over here. If you only had to do nude lips for the rest of your life or red lips for the rest of your life, which one is it? Oh, come on, what do you think? Nude, period. Yes. But don't you think you get bored of nude after a while? Yeah, but there's a lot of different kinds of nudes. True. I like red, but I don't like red enough to like say that's like, <laughs> I'm using it for the rest of my life. Are you reverse contouring? I'm just cutting. Cut, cut. <laughs> But both actually. Yeah, I used to have long hair. Really? Yeah. You don't, but you don't wear wigs. No, 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 no. <laughs> I wore one one time for Halloween. Mm -hmm. I was Tarzan. Oh my God. <laughs> have you ever had long hair, um, Mario? Yeah, like up to my jaw. Okay, Bobisha. <laughs> oh, Look, Bob, such a stiff wear. <laughs> Mario invented the stiff wear, honey. No, but like it, it was, you know, you know it was I know, slick back. I know exactly what you mean. Well, something. Do not just say Bobisha. I can't. <laughs> that sounds like a name from my country, actually, Bobisha. <laughs> really? Oh my god. How do you know? Like, how do you just even the hair? Like, do all of those types of styles have like a base, and then you just kind of maneuver kind of from just, the hair? A lot of styles that I've done is do it as I go. Wow. <laughs> Soft glow highlighter. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna mix a little bit of honey and golden. Now the girls need to see this. Yes, Mario. <laughs> Ashley, I like how you leaned in like. Oh my God, that is so pretty. And it doesn't look too powdery. Like some powder highlights, they just like, I feel like they just sit on the skin. It feels like a cream more. Yeah, it's almost like a cream to powder and that sheared out a little bit, even what you just did. Oh, you want clavicle? Okay. <laughs> Clap, clavisha. This is an old school color of mine that I used for many years. Uh -huh. It's um, Prestige Cosmetics. It's a drugstore brand. Oh, you like overlining? I do. Me too. Just a little bit, you know. Mm -hmm. This one's more warm. I'm gonna go with a more cool tone over this. Mm -hmm. This is lipstick. I was using yeah. kind of like liner. But Got I'm gonna, it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a lipstick with this. So what I'm doing is I'm just putting this right from the um, Master Pigment Pro lip palette, and then I'm taking a little bit of shade number two here, and a little bit of shade number um, five. Can we see your hand. Yes, and I'm just kind of mixing that in to get like a nice kind of. That's really yeah. Pinky tone. That's that's a Jackie pink right there. I have there. a Boom. feeling that you want a pink because like I think you probably this is the color you imagined your whole life that would be on white. 
No, I just, I don't know, no? I don't know where. I just literally was like, ooh, pink. Okay. I'm just seeing pink. I don't know if it's like this the is hair color. Me, it's, this is giving me like Jackie, like from back in the day uh, lips, vibes. Probably. Yeah. I would even do that one too. That one's a little bit this more. One? Yeah, okay. I would even do that, but I like that too. Okay, let's try it. Let's see. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's so pretty. Matte lip or gloss? No, I mean like in general, what do you prefer? Oh, if I had to choose one, I would mm -hmm. say matte. Mm. Or soft matte, but I like both. Yeah. And then you can put... That is a Jackie Pink. And we're doing a nude mm -hmm. gloss? Yeah, this is Pro Volume Lip Gloss in Golden Nude. This is um. Why haven't I seen these? You haven't seen them? No. Oh, but that's from the holiday collection um, last year that we didn't send out. Now, I'm gonna just kind of mix this uh -huh. with the pink concoction. Yes. Okay. And it'll kind of mute a little bit or just kind of tone down the rub that in. <clears throat> Whoa, it's a little frosty. Yeah, I wasn't expecting to, that. We need to now put liner now again around to mute it. And blend it. No, <clears throat> I like it like that too. We don't even need that. Like what? I like it like that. Let me see. It's Looks pretty. Great. It's just me. Oh, that you know what that is very like. It feels like very you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean. I like it, but just a little bit. Oh, the frost is so pretty. Where's the frost? You don't see it? No. Like, doesn't it look a little frosty to you? Mm -hmm. Frosty. I think maybe um glittery. Yeah, shimmery. Almost a little, a little silvery pink. Dennis is leaving me at the altar. I'm going to play football. How do you like my look? Babe? It looks amazing. Mario's done an amazing job. You should do it every day. What you trying to say? So what you trying to say? Because what? So what is you trying to say? I'm not fine. Some of the honey, honey highlighter, soft glow highlighter. Uh huh. With um, just a little bit of number three from the master from the master mats. Just to do what? Tone the shimmer down. Got it. I liked it even when you just just raked it out. Yeah, right? I loved it so even good. just like yes. that. That lace is melted. You hear me? Right. Looking good. But I heard you did it with a special product. Oh yeah. Just can can, can you put the girls <laughs> on, especially for the sweaty babies? I um, formulated the glue because I deal with a lot of performers, and um, I needed something that was truly sweat resistant. A lot of times when people are performing or they're sweating, mm -hmm. I, I was working with. Um, Sloane Stevens and she does tennis and you know working with Meg and working with all these other girls that just do like high performance dancing and etc. I needed to find something that was gonna stand the test of time. Like and yep. I had to test that thing out and make sure that it worked before I started selling it. I formulated it for at least two years before I brought it out. Wow. Yeah, so. so this is you have a glue, you have an extreme hold, you have a regular, you have a skin protect, you have a Scalp remover. The okay. Remover, the lace tints. Got um, it. Everything that you possibly would need to do the job and make it look like mine. Okay. Link in the description. Boom. Could one use that for their eyelashes too? Like, I, know I it's really strong. would not. <laughs> I'll give you a bottle. You test it out and oh tell me how you test it out yourself first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I like this because it dries fast. It dries super fast. So that's one thing I do like about it is that it dries extremely fast. Oh, it does? Let me see. Yeah, look. It just grabs it. Oh, wait. And put it's it, like, like, put it on your hand. It's not tacky. No, it, is, it does in the beginning, but then oh. it dries. Like, it's not one of those glues that you have to sit there and wait for it yeah. to dry. Like, it's there and then. Oh, yeah. It does dry fast. Wow. Yeah, it dries super fast. Damn. Oh, it feels matte. It's a matte finish. Yeah, exactly. it feels matte. So you're never going to get any shine. That's nice, because sometimes I hate when it looks like oily, like in the hair. Ugh. I hate that. But that's what adds to like the more realistic look. When um, it's matte. When it's matte. Yeah, I agree. That's why I sometimes put a little powder in there. I probably shouldn't because then it starts looking gunky after a while. Yeah, probably day three, or day two. Mm, yeah. Damn, but and I ain't got nowhere to go. Like I'm looking too good to be at home. This is so, oh my God, I just can't get over how beautiful this color is. Yeah, it's firing. And I don't think I've ever had a blonde wig this long and this full and this luscious. Those are some long strip lashes. I mean, um, individuals. Can you do me a favor? Yeah. Um, I want you to flip your head upside down and shake it. Ooh, okay. Now shake it. Shake, 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 shake. Great. Now flip it. This is such a Leo lioness hairstyle. Ooh, you want to come in and shake the room up, right? Right. 
like this is like birthday hair. If I grew up in the South, this oh is how God. I would wear my hair at probably every day. <laughs> to the grocery store, to school. This is moisturizing, what's this? It's actually another mixture of a bunch of stuff, but the majority of it is um, some lip matte, like soft matte lip colors, and then I mixed a little bit of my pigments, the foundation pigments in it. Mm. I, use, I, I use foundation lips a lot. Oh, oh, this is the lip you wanted to do, I see, okay. <laughs> well, wanted, actually, I love it I this see. Yeah. He I said know. I scared him with the pink. <laughs> No, not scare me. I, it just was unexpected. It was unexpected. I wasn't expecting that. Oh, really? Yeah, because she was very, she was firm about it. She's like, give me a pink. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, we're um, This. I love this. Thing. Is stunning. Y'all see the inches? I'm gonna have to check the wig in at TSA because it's so full, baby. Fully full body scan of the wig. That's the end of look two. Yeah. Yeah. Okay guys, so that is the end of look two, the reception look. Kellen, I mean, the hair, like, yeah, can I we talk, it. can we discuss? Because I curled the ends of your hair when it was in the bun, mm -hmm. it was pretty easy. I just took the pins down and literally just brushed through it and defined them a little bit. But yeah, um, it looks amazing on you. It looks- All this volume and body. So basically I just treated it as if we were at the actual wedding. You know, you don't have a lot of time to change it. So I just uh, took off the pink lip and I added a really, honey, gorgeous, nude, um, soft brown lip, did a little powder, added a little blush and bronzer, and that's pretty much it. I like the fact that you use complexion for my lip, right? Instead of like yeah. lipsticks and glosses. Um, I definitely mixed a little bit of foundation um, into the lipstick, uh, just to give it that nice olive, um, honey, uh, warmth. Well, I hope you guys had fun. I had so much fun doing so much this. Fun with you. Thank you guys so for, much fun. Yes. thank you guys for coming to my channel. It was amazing having you, but you know, uh, you know what that means, right? What's that mean? Y'all are coming back. Oh yeah, you gotta <laughs> do that, this again. Okay. Do yes, let's do it for sure. Mara, Period. you promise we all doing this again? Yes, let's do it for sure. Next time you're getting bundles. <laughs> 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 Thank you guys so much for joining me on today's video. If you want to watch another one, since there's three of us, I just put the video right in front of my face, right here. Boom! Just click right here. Just. <laughs>